The M2 Browning machine gun was an incredibly effective weapon used by the United States during the Second World War. The 50 caliber rounds were huge compared to the 30 6 fired by the M1919 general purpose machine gun. But if it was so good, why didn't any of the German ground forces have a 50 cal comparison? There are plenty of examples of the Germans making copies of Allied weapons. So why didn't they just do that for the M2 Browning? Well in today's video, we look at the German alternatives to 50 cal machine guns in World War II. If you enjoy this video and want to see more, hit that subscribe button. It's free and really helps the channel reach more history lovers like you. The 50 cal M2 Browning was developed following the end of the First World War. Its evolution and improvements over time would see it used extensively during the Second World War. For the most part, the weapon was mounted on tanks, trucks and half-tracks, though it also saw a lot of use in aircraft and on ships. The 50 cal round caused significant damage to whatever it targeted. Its primary purpose was as an anti-material weapon, so ground forces would usually see it fired at aircraft and vehicles, although it was also used against enemy infantry. So surely it made sense for Germany to make a copy of this weapon, given how effective it was. But they didn't. Well, not in the way the M2 was used. The MG131 was a heavy machine gun which featured a round of similar size to the 50 cal, that being a 13mm round. But it was only used by the Luftwaffe in their aircraft, and not by any German ground forces. Also, the weapon fired electronically primed ammunition, meaning it used a current to prime the round before it left the gun. This helped it sustain a high rate of fire but this wasn't easily transferable to a version the German army could use. It would need some type of power source nearby to fire the weapon. The lack of a direct 50 cal copy mostly comes down to necessity. For the most part, the German general purpose machine guns, the MG34 and 42, would be the main mounted machine guns on vehicles and tanks. They fulfilled the same role as the M2, with the ability to fire at enemy aircraft or, if necessary, approaching ground targets. The MG42 fired a 7.92mm round, whereas the 50 cal was a 12.7mm round. The MG's rate of fire more than made up for its lack of round size, and it was a lot easier to manoeuvre around. But it wasn't just their machine guns the Germans relied on to fill the 50 cal void. Their 20mm Flak 30 and 38 easily had this covered. This weapon, although not as mobile as the 50 cal, was widely feared by the Allies. The weapon could be mounted on half-tracks and other vehicles. It could have wheels attached for movement on the battlefield, or it could be set in a fixed position. With a range of 2.2 kilometers and a rate of fire of around 180 rounds a minute, the 20 mm could easily damage or destroy most Allied targets. Much like the Quad 50, the 20 mm came in a version with four mounted guns. This was particularly effective against Allied aircraft, and even more devastating against ground targets. But as the war evolved, so did the armour of aircraft on both sides. This meant that the 20mm and certainly the 50 cal weren't as effective against attacking planes, but that didn't stop their continued use. Most battlefield reports as to the effectiveness of the MG42 were positive. Its rate of fire and ease of use, coupled with its ability to destroy targets, meant German forces were confident enough to not pursue a version featuring a larger calibre. The 20mm, although not a machine gun, and not a weapon as easily deployed as the M2 Browning, seemed to bridge the gap between the two weapons. When it comes down to it, Germany just saw no need to take the time to create a 50 cal machine gun. They already had what they needed in these two weapons. The necessity to spend time, money, manufacturing and materials on a brand new weapon just wasn't there. But let's be honest, a 50 cal version of the MG42 does sound like an incredibly scary weapon, and definitely not something the Allies needed during the war.
Did you ever turn your mind to the lack of German 50 cows during the war? If they did create one, how effective do you think it would have been? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to expand your knowledge and join the growing Premier History community.